In the year 808 CE, deep within a Tang Dynasty laboratory, Chinese alchemists pursuing the ultimate prize, immortality itself, accidentally created humanity's most destructive force. The quest for eternal life had just given birth to the technology that would end millions of lives across the next thousand years. This wasn't just any mistake. This single, failed experiment didn't merely change warfare. It rewrote the entire trajectory of human civilization, determining which empires would rise, which would fall, and how the modern world would take shape. But what were these scholars actually trying to create? And how did their methodical pursuit of life everlasting go so catastrophically, world-changingly wrong? For over a millennium, one accidental discovery has shaped every major conflict, revolution, and shift in global power. From the fall of medieval castles to the rise of colonial empires, from the transformation of entire continents to the foundation of modern industrial warfare. All of it traces back to a moment when Chinese alchemists mixed the wrong ingredients in their search for immortality. This story is built from cross-check Tang Dynasty texts, Song military records, archaeological evidence, and documented historical processes spanning multiple civilizations and centuries of technological development. Today, we'll investigate how Taoist monks seeking to cheat death accidentally created gunpowder, then trace its devastating journey as it spread across continents, transformed societies, and ultimately determined which civilizations would dominate the modern world. But first, we need to understand just how profoundly modern people misunderstand what actually happened in those ancient Chinese laboratories. Here's what most people think they know about gunpowder. Some Chinese alchemists were randomly mixing chemicals, something exploded by accident, and suddenly they had invented gunpowder. This narrative is not just oversimplified, it's fundamentally wrong. The accident story completely ignores the sophisticated alchemical science that had been developing for centuries before that moment in 808 CE. These weren't primitive experimenters throwing random substances together. The Tang Dynasty scholars who created gunpowder were following methodical chemical research protocols that had been documented and refined for over 400 years. By the 5th century CE, Chinese texts already described the explosive potential of saltpetre and sulphur when combined under specific conditions. These alchemists knew exactly what each ingredient could do. They had been studying these substances for generations. Consider this. Tang Dynasty alchemical texts from centuries before gunpowder's accidental discovery contain detailed documentation of saltpetre's properties, sulphur's reactions, and charcoal's role in various chemical processes. These weren't random experiments. They were systematic investigations conducted by scholars who maintain meticulous records of every reaction, every combination, every result. We've reduced one of history's most important scientific breakthroughs to a simple oops story, when in reality, the explosive mixture that emerged in 808 CE represented the culmination of centuries of methodical chemical experimentation. The accident was actually the inevitable result of sophisticated scientific inquiry that wouldn't be matched in Europe for another 600 years. So if this wasn't really an accident, what were these alchemists actually doing? And why were they so methodically studying these particular substances? To understand what really happened, we need to enter the world of Taoist alchemy, a sophisticated scientific discipline that combined chemistry, medicine, and philosophy in ways that modern science is only beginning to appreciate. These weren't mystical practitioners working with superstition. They were the world's first systematic chemists, and they had a very specific goal, creating the elixir of life. For Taoist alchemists, Immortality wasn't a fantasy, it was an engineering problem. They believed that by understanding and manipulating the fundamental properties of matter, they could create substances that would extend human life indefinitely. 
This required precise knowledge of how different materials interacted, how they could be purified, and how they could be combined to produce specific effects. By 808 CE, these scholars had already spent centuries refining saltpetre and sulphur for medicinal purposes. Saltpetre was valued for its ability to preserve and purify. Sulphur was used in various healing compounds. Charcoal served as both a purifying agent and a source of carbon for chemical reactions. Each substance had been studied, documented and used in countless formulations designed to enhance health and extend life. The explosive mixture that we now call gunpowder emerged from their methodical attempts to create increasingly pure and potent versions of these life-extending medicines. The earliest confirmed reference to gunpowder, found in a text from 808 CE, describes it not as a weapon, but as a failed batch of immortality pills that burned down the laboratory and singed the alchemist's beard. Here's what makes this remarkable. These Tang Dynasty alchemists weren't primitive experimenters stumbling around in the dark. They were following sophisticated chemical protocols, maintaining detailed records, and building on centuries of accumulated knowledge. Their understanding of chemical reactions, purification processes, and material properties was more advanced than anything that would exist in Europe until the late medieval period. But recognizing the power of their accidental discovery was just the beginning. The real genius lay in what they and their successors did next. The transformation of an alchemical accident into a military revolution didn't happen overnight. It took nearly two centuries for Chinese engineers to fully understand what they had discovered and how it could be weaponized. But when the Song Dynasty, 960 to 1127 CE, finally grasped the military potential of gunpowder, they didn't just make weapons. They created the world's first systematic military technology program. Song Dynasty arsenals operated with an efficiency and sophistication that wouldn't be seen again until the Industrial Age. They didn't simply produce gunpowder, they engineered standardized weapon systems. Fire lances, essentially spears with attached gunpowder tubes, were manufactured to precise specifications. Flamethrowers that could spray ignited oil fires across enemy formations were built according to detailed technical manuals. Fire arrows were mass-produced with consistent range and explosive power. The military genius of the Song Dynasty becomes clear when we examine the career of General Wei Sheng, who in 1120 CE revolutionized battlefield tactics by mounting firearms on mobile chariots. These weren't crude cannons. They were sophisticated artillery units that could be rapidly repositioned during battle. Wei Sheng's innovations created the world's first mobile artillery formations, 300 years before European armies would develop similar capabilities. During the Song Jin conflicts of the early 12th century, Song forces demonstrated the devastating effectiveness of coordinated gunpowder weapons. Historical records describe fire lance formations that could penetrate Jin cavalry armor at distances of 50 meters flamethrower units that could destroy enemy siege equipment and fortifications. Artillery bombardments that could break enemy formations before they reached Song defensive lines. The Song dynasty's control over gunpowder technology was so strategically important that in 1073 CE, trading saltpeter and sulphur across borders was banned entirely. These materials were classified as state secrets their export punishable by death. The Song understood that their technological superiority in gunpowder weapons was the key to their survival against larger, more numerous enemies. What's remarkable is that medieval China possessed firearms technology that was more advanced than what Europe would achieve until the Renaissance. Song dynasty weapons weren't primitive explosives. They were precision-engineered military systems that gave Chinese forces decisive advantages in warfare for centuries. Yet this technological superiority was about to spread far beyond China's borders, carried by the largest land empire in human history.
The Mongol conquests of the 13th century created something unprecedented in human history, a continuous land empire stretching from Eastern Europe to the Pacific Ocean. And as Mongol armies swept across continents, they carried with them the most advanced military technology of their age. Chinese gunpowder weapons operated by defected Song Dynasty engineers. The siege of Baghdad in 1258 CE provides a perfect example of how gunpowder technology spread across civilizations. Mongol forces, equipped with Chinese-designed weapons and guided by Song military engineers who had joined the Mongol cause, used coordinated artillery bombardments to breach the walls of one of the Islamic world's greatest cities. The technology that had begun in Tang Dynasty laboratories was now reshaping the political map of the Middle East. Islamic scholars and engineers in the Safavid Empire didn't simply copy Chinese designs, they adapted and refined them. By the early 1500s, Safavid forces were using musket formations and artillery systems that incorporated both Chinese innovations and Islamic engineering improvements. The technology was evolving as it spread, becoming more sophisticated with each civilization that adopted it. European adoption of gunpowder technology in the 1300s reveals something fascinating about technological transfer. Early European firearms were crude compared to Chinese originals that were already 400 years old. European cannons were less accurate, less reliable and less effective than Song Dynasty artillery. But European engineers learned quickly and within two centuries they had not only matched Chinese capabilities but begun developing innovations of their own. What's crucial to understand is that Europe didn't independently invent firearms. They reverse engineered Chinese technology that had been perfected centuries earlier. The European invention of gunpowder weapons was actually the result of technological knowledge that had travelled along trade routes, through military conflicts and via captured equipment from the far more advanced Chinese military systems. This technological transfer would do more than change warfare. It would reshape the entire global balance of power, determining which civilizations would dominate the early modern world. The spread of gunpowder technology didn't just change how wars were fought, it fundamentally altered the structure of human civilization. For over a thousand years, European society had been organized around stone castles and heavily armored knights. Gunpowder weapons made both obsolete virtually overnight. Castle walls that had withstood sieges for months could now be breached in days by cannon bombardment. Knights in heavy armor who had dominated European battlefields for centuries, became vulnerable targets for soldiers with firearms. The entire feudal system, which depended on the military superiority of armoured cavalry and fortified positions, collapsed as gunpowder weapons democratised warfare. But the most profound impact of gunpowder technology was on global exploration and colonisation. European colonial expansion was only possible because gunpowder weapons gave small forces devastating advantages over much larger armies that lacked similar technology. When Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés landed in Mexico with fewer than 500 men, he was able to conquer the Aztec Empire, a civilization of millions, primarily because his forces possessed firearms while the Aztecs did not. This pattern repeated across the globe. Portuguese traders used gunpowder weapons to establish trading posts along the African coast. Dutch colonists employed firearms to control vast territories in Southeast Asia. British forces used artillery and muskets to dominate the Indian subcontinent. In each case, technological superiority derived from Chinese innovations allowed relatively small European forces to control much larger populations. The technology that had begun as a Tang Dynasty quest for immortality had become the foundation of European global dominance. One alchemical mistake in ancient China ultimately determined which civilizations would shape the modern world, which empires would rise and fall, 
and how global power would be distributed for the next five centuries. Consider the profound irony. Chinese alchemists seeking to extend human life accidentally created the technology that would enable European powers to project military force across the globe, often at the expense of the very civilization that had originally developed these innovations. The next time you see fireworks lighting up the night sky, remember what you're actually witnessing. You're watching the same chemical reaction that Taoist monks stumbled upon over a thousand years ago while trying to cheat death. You're seeing the same explosive force that brought down medieval castles, enabled global exploration, and reshaped the political map of the world. The story of gunpowder reveals something profound about innovation and unintended consequences. The most transformative discoveries often emerge not from pursuing the obvious, but from the methodical investigation of seemingly impossible goals. Those Tang Dynasty alchemists never found their elixir of immortality, but their systematic pursuit of that impossible dream accidentally gave birth to the technology that would define the modern age. Sometimes the most profound changes in human history come from the most unexpected places. And sometimes the search for one impossible dream creates an entirely different and far more consequential reality. Subscribe if you'd like to explore more stories of how ancient discoveries shaped our world and the unexpected ways that human curiosity continues to transform our future.